Hello and welcome to the France 24 interview where we will discuss nuclear energy in the wake of the Fukushima disaster, nuclear energy and beyond. What consequences on the world economy and on the world energy policies of what's happening in Japan? We just learned today that China, China has decided to halt all their nuclear projects, no new projects in China as of now. China represents 40% of the world planned reactors. Our guest today is Leila Ben Ali. Hello. Hello. Thank you for being with us. You are Professor of Energy Strategies and the show today is done in partnership with uh, the Paris School of International Affairs where you are a teacher. Thank you very much for stopping by at France 24. What is your assessment of what's happening uh, today, uh, these days in Japan, in Fukushima? How bad is it? Well, I mean, in addition to me being a professor at, at Paris School of International Affairs, I'm also an energy consultant and researcher at the Cambridge Energy Research Associates. And we have been assessing the situation, uh, just like everyone, I think, in the, in the energy market. How bad it is, I think nobody knows for sure how bad the situation is. The issue of visibility, it, it's quite difficult to, uh, for anyone actually involved in, in, the, in the nuclear industry to have a clear understanding of how bad the situation Why is. Why is it so difficult? Is anybody hiding something? I don't think there is a, I don't think the issue is about transparency, if that's, if that's what you are trying to, to get to. I think the issue there is the nature of the industry. I mean, nuclear reactor by, by nature is something which, and we were discussing a little bit earlier on, the, the chain reaction that you can have in a nuclear reactor is difficult to manage. It, it's an industry we know that it, it's difficult this um, the industry which is very difficult to manage and uh, the various part of the reactors need a proper management uh, so that this is the reason why i think you can draw some parallelism with uh, deep offshore operations in the oil industry. These are operations which are very difficult to manage because you will need to have a different i mean different set of skills uh, you cannot use uh, human resources like in any other industry directly right. on the site, etc., etc. Complex processes. Very and, complex and processes. And technology. Could we agree at least on, let's say, two scenarios? One would be the dark scenario, the big leak, uh, Tokyo affected, okay. and the, let's not say rosy, but not so dark scenario, which is that the, the leak could be controlled in the coming hours and there would be uh, some uh, dozens of maybe employees affected or infected. In, these, in both of these scenarios, what would be the, the reaction of, of the rest of the world in terms of uh, energy policies? I think um, regardless of the scenarios, I think at this point there is one thing for sure, which is that nuclear energy policies are being questioned, even in the case of France, which is, I would say, uh, the example of a country which has built its, its energy policy on nuclear, you see some debate uh, in that. In other countries which are supposed to be nuclearized in the future and which, are, which we have been considering uh, nuclear projects, there is, of course, uh, a questioning of, uh, of that. And I think, I think it's too early to assess what would be the long-term impact on those projects, on uh, currently operating plants as well, on uh, and, and we've seen uh, the German reaction as well uh, on on on, uh, on most balling, uh, uh, nuclear plants. So I think the reactions will be different, but I think one common denominator would be that safety standards will be heightened. Safety standards will be very important in the future, and I think that will have an implication on the nature of the players which will be involved in the nuclear industry in the future. What do you mean? I mean, if uh, during the recent years we have seen uh, some emphasis on, on costs, prices, uh, it was, it has been in, in some recent projects, it has been important, I would say, to come up with uh, 
with the with the least costly solution. Now I think there will be a revival of those safety standards and and probably uh, the solutions which will, which will be envisioned in future would be there will be uh, uh, I, I think an insistence on uh, what kind of safety the, that those players bring into the, into the table. Will this be good for French players for instance because I can't hide it I'm French I'm interested in this and France has a big role to play here. For whom will it be good? Once again, I mean, it's still very early to, to state for whom it will be good or whether there will be any winners between brackets and all this. And it, I think it will be quite indecent as well to start talking about winners in this situation. Uh, however, it, I think at some point, uh, the, this, the, all the industry, all the industry will have to draw the consequences of what is happening in Japan today, just like it drew the consequences of Chernobyl, just like it drew the consequences of the Three Mile Island accident in the U.S. Um, there will have to be consequences being drawn. Now, we were in the process, the industry was in the process of, of, of moving to hopefully a third generation of nuclear reactors, which will include uh, higher safety standards. And these are thing, things which are being taken into account uh, probably in, in those new generations. You said we have to wait and see, but the Germans, the Chinese, they don't wait and see. They have announced that they are idling or uh, halting their projects now. Isn't there a psychological effect? Uh, there's definitely a psych psychological effect. There's definitely a psychological effect, especially in those countries where uh, there has been already a debate in place and the ingredients for, for questioning of, of the nuclear industry in those countries. So in all those countries, I think, as you're right to mention, there's no need to, to wait. But once again, I'm talking here about the long-term implications on the nuclear industry because we have seen a lot of, of debate about whether the industry has been re seen a renaissance in the last few years or whether this, this accident, I think this is something which is, is on everybody's mind, whether this accident will kill uh, the nuclear industry. I, I, th I still think it's still early to draw conclusions on, on the shape of the nuclear industry for the next 20 to 30 years. But once again, I mean, the governments are, are already moving to, uh, to decide what they should do in the near future. And as far as energy policies in general are concerned, if nuclear appears to be too dangerous, uh, is, an, is it reasonable to, to think that oil is going to be the future again? Uh, first, there is a there is a risk assessment story there. Uh, how how can you match the probability of the occurrence of an accident with the damage that it will that it will create? And in nuclear industry, it's definitely something which has been uh, assessed for a long time, and it's not something new. Um, what, what do you mean here? Not every country is under a threat of tsunamis. That's what is that what you mean? That's that's partly it. I mean, in the, ca the case of Japan, has highlighted something which, uh, and we have been. Seeing that uh, we have been assessing that at IHS Sarah, which is that the reactor has surprisingly withstood the earthquake. What it did not withstand was the tsunami which came afterward. Mm -hmm. So for all those countries which would think that they are not under the, under the direct threat of, of a tsunami, they might actually, if, if they are, especially I'm thinking about those emerging countries which have uh, double-digit growth rates in their energy demands and need a solution and need different solutions, not only nuclear but also oil, gas, coal, etc. We were talking about China earlier. That's definitely a good case. Uh, although China is, is, is too uh, geographically close to Japan, so I assume the, the, the situation will be watched much more closely. But in countries in, in Latin America, in the Middle East, etc., I think there will be a, a reassessment of, of, of the situation and there might be there might be discourses, and I see that uh, emerging in in my discussions with people, especially in the Middle East, that um, actually what happened here has shown the resilience of of of, of, of a reactor. So um, so that's why I was saying it might be too early to draw conclusions for the long term. Once again, as, as maybe too early to, to predict a, an oil rush rush to oil. You have, you have potentially a rush to oil, a rush to coal as well, gas. I think for, it's quite difficult to make a generalization because it, it's difficult to change the fuel mix of a country overnight. When you have designed your energy policies, it's usually for... for, for you, can have, you can have some flexibility in the system, but usually it's for 10 to 20 years that you, that you engineer that. 
Now, um, and it takes five years to, to build a coal plant, for example. You can switch from gas to oil in some, in some areas, but, I mean, once again, the flexibility thing is, remains relatively limited, especially in large countries. We might see, and we see that the impact on oil markets now is relatively limited. The impact of, of the Japanese disaster is relatively limited simply because the, the market is, seems to be uh, already assessing the impact that it will have on economic recovery. The impact that could be slowed down, that could be slowed down in, in the near future. Um, if, just to give you some, some numbers, we were in a situation where uh, uh, we had a July, in July 2007 an earthquake in, in Japan which resulted in, in the loss of, of some nuclear capacity. And some of that uh, industrial, uh, the loss in demand in the industry and the transportation sector is offset by the potential small increase in, in, in oil demand for the power sector. Thank you very much, Leila Ben Ali. Very Thank you for stopping by. I understand you are caref careful, and you are right, rightfully careful because we don't exactly know what's, what's happening. But this is critical for the future of the world economy. Nevertheless, thank you for watching the France 24 interview. Stay with us for yet another bulletin in a couple of minutes.